Well, today's game was a major disappointment. Manchester United lost to West Ham 2-1. And honestly speaking, this was really embarrassing. I was expecting a win. I predicted a win. And uh, the players disappointed. Standout players in terms of the disappointment awards. The first one goes to Dalo. The second one goes to Bruno Fernandes. That header should have been... <laughs> Nobody's mocking you. That header should have been a goal. And also Ganacho. Two chances that he should have scored. Now, I'm not going to just only focus on the shoulda, woulda, coulda FC. Because that seems like that's who we are. There was also some other things that I feel like... Eric Ten Hag could have done as well. You saw Lupetegi make some substitutions, bringing in Somerville, Thomas Susek. That, that triple substitution actually shifted the momentum of the game. And Eric Ten Hag took a while to respond until I guess maybe the almost 60th minute to bring in Ahmad, which was not a bad substitution, in, uh, honestly speaking. But I understand also that he does not have Mason Mount. He does not have, like, we're still in a little bit of an injury crisis right now. And whether you choose to ignore that and you say you don't want to hear injuries as an excuse, that's your choice. But the truth of the matter is Eric Ten Hag should have still done something earlier on tactically to influence the game, especially when West Ham were getting, uh, building more momentum. Um, I also have to acknowledge that when we're playing away from home you're not going to dominate the, the opposition 90 minutes I have to give flowers to the way the first half was all Manchester United Onana didn't have anything to do Onana could have been on TikTok or Instagram if he wanted so, the very simple way out of this horrible situation that we're in is to say Eric Ten Hag, you know, is at fault. But you have to look at the facts. You have to look at the objective truth. And honestly speaking, we should have been four goals up by half time. And once you do that, you know that you've set yourself up to win. So... I want to just blame most of the blame on the players, especially the offense. Sure, Dalo is not a striker, but he should still do better. Ahmad Diallo, you had about 30 minutes to make an impact. Some people say, yes, you're not an impact sub, but you know, if you've been on the bench, you're supposed to come in inspired, invigorated, and just ready to take on the opportunity. And he was not necessarily exceptional today. Um, Rasmus Hoyland also should have scored. He had a one opportunity where, you know, <laughs> he does everything right. He pretty much... <laughs> Look at how Isak performed today. Even though Newcastle lost, there was a moment where Isak was one on one with the goalkeeper. He dribbles the goalkeeper and gives himself a better chance to score. You know? So Hoyland should have done something better in that moment. And this is the part and parcel of being a Manchester United forward. There's moments where, you know, you don't get too many chances. You have to be ready, you have to take them. So, I'm so, 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 so angered by today's game. I know that the media, this is what they want. They want us in turmoil. They want us to be pointing fingers. And obviously, because Eric Ten Hag is the captain of the ship, a lot of fingers will be pointed at him. But I just feel like there is... Another way to look at this situation 
and 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 see that if we had scored the three four chances we had at the beginning of the first half this game is a totally different story i'm struggling to think of any positives honestly i think casemiro did all right Ericsson was okay. Mazarawi handled Bowen all right. And um, honestly, uh, the goal that we conceded, I'm sorry, Dallo was the closest guy to Somerville. So if we had a fullback who was more awake and more you know his concentrate with higher concentration levels he would, wouldn't have let Somerville have that moment to just tap in a ball into the net so it is becoming harder by the day by the game to defend Ten Hag but also you know six more points were in a top four conversation there's that other mathematical perspective as well. Of course, I know that we're 14th. We're close, closer to relegation than, than top four. And that's the truth. But I want to remind you, if you see this, remember, it's all about perspective. We're only a quarter of the season done. And um, if we take the chances that were given, finish your dinner, you can kill off a game. Chelsea's coming up next in the Premier League. Leicester City is coming up next. So we have to make sure we're up for the races. Ah, uh, it's a tough one. It's a very deflating result. And um, I'm just gonna be still backing the manager because I think <laughs> on another 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 game we play this game versus West Ham again we beat him nine out of ten times we beat him and today was just like a freak unfortunate sequence of events something has to be said about that VAR decision Michael Oliver should have never got involved but I don't want to blame the referee some injustices will happen you know so i deny today's game i deny today's result i deny today's atrocious var decision making thank you for listening please make sure you hit the like button and subscribe whether you're ten hog in or ten hog out we're man united on you all the way